Hello and welcome! Today we are reviewing Ken Follett's World Without End, a historical drama set in the fictional European town of Kingsbridge during the 14th century. The book starts at the beginning of the Hundred Years' War and ends during the Black Plague, a truly dark time in human history, but Ken Follett tackles this challenge and has created a vivid world through his detailed and clean prose. The story plot was so good it was actually created into a TV series. The, I personally have not seen that series and probably won't as I love the book so much. And I know when I love the book, the movies just never live up to my expectations. Anyways, let's actually review this book now. <laughs> the story revolves around four children, Merthyn, Karis, Gwenda, and Merthyn's brother, Ralph. And they unknowingly stumble into a conflict between a knight and the queen's men, and they must bury a secret letter under a tree. How will this shared secret influence their lives and relationships, and will they ever discover what was written on that secret letter? Those are all great questions, which you can find out by reading this book, which I highly recommend. I think what I enjoyed most about this story is how masterfully it intertwines characters in their development, and how detailed Ken Follett recreates 14th century Europe. Though I do warn you, this book is quite realistic and designed for a mature audience. While not intentionally written as a horror book, it is quite graphic depicting a realistic view of this dark era in history, so be warned. Though this vividness of this book gives it a really realistic feel to this world and a true snapshot into the past, bringing alive this historic era. He also incorporates a wide range of class types in this era, from peasants and merchants to lord and monastery hierarchies, it even includes an architect, one of my personal favorites in this book, which allows Ken Follett to lead the reader through the process of building these beautiful churches and bridges of this era. And because of this wide range of characters, it gives the reader an excellent snapshot of the class relations in this era. One of the only downfalls, though, is that it plays too much to classic stereotypes, causing the characters to be a little bit more shallow. However, because he spent less time developing these deep internal worlds of unique characters, he was able to develop the relationships between the characters more, which resulted in more drama and is quite enjoyable to read. This is actually probably why it was created into a TV show. I think the story was especially strong in its overarching structure. Depicting a lifelong story of four characters is no easy task, but it was done artfully and Ken Follett can hold your attention for all thousand pages of his novel. To conclude this review, I will read you just one paragraph to give you a little bit snapshot sample of his writing. So to begin. For his third shot, he aimed the bow upward, hoping the arrow would fly through the air in an arc and come down into the trunk. But he overcompensated and the arrow went into the branches and fell to the ground amid a flurry of dry brown leaves. Earthen was embarrassed. Archery was more difficult than he had imagined. The bow was probably all right, he guessed, the problem was his own proficiency, or lack of it. Once again, Kara seemed not to notice his discomfiture. Let me have a go, she said. Girls can't shoot, Ralph said, and he snatched the bow from Merthyn, standing sideways onto the target, as Merthyn had. He did not shoot straight away, but flexed the bow several times, getting the feel for it. Like Merthyn, he found it harder than he had expected at first, but after a few moments, he seemed to get the hang of it. Hope had dropped all three arrows at Quenda's feet, and now the little girl picked them up and handed them to Ralph. He took aim without drawing the bow, sighting the arrow at the tree trunk. While there was no pressure on his arms, Merthyn realized he should have done the same. Why did these things come so naturally to Ralph, who could never answer a riddle? Ralph drew the bow, not effortlessly, but with a fluid motion, seeming to take strain with his thighs. He released the bow and it hit the trunk of the oak tr tree, sinking an inch or more into the soft outer wood. Ralph laughed triumphantly 